choose the way of faith for the sake of God's kingdom because he didn't have all the information. He thought he knew what was going on, but God revealed just a very small piece of the pie. He says, Joseph, I know you think it's this, but it's actually this. And that wasn't even the whole story. I mean, generations upon generations of people have been blessed by Joseph's decision to follow the way of faith instead of the way of what made sense to him at the time. You know, the Bible tells us that there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads into destruction. Because if we depend solely on what makes sense to us at the time without allowing God to speak to us, we can get ourselves and our family and a lot of people into a lot of trouble. And Joseph chose the way of faith. It reminds me again of this uh, passage of Scripture in the book of Acts that I've been reading very, very often. And just to give you a little preview, if you're wondering where we're going in January as far as sermon series and the emphasis about where our church is going, start reading the book of Acts. If you've read it before, read it again. If you just got done reading it yesterday, read it again today. Just get, get in the habit of reading the book of Acts often. And, and there's a passage of Scripture, and I talked about this last week, where where the disciples were, were, were asking Jesus, now that He's, you know, died for humanity and risen again, and, and He's conquered sin and He's conquered death, they ask Him the question, well, you know, Jesus, are you now going to take care of business in Israel? Are you going to kick the Romans out? Are you going to make things right? Are you going to do, you know, make Congress do what they're going to do and lower our taxes and increase health care? Are you going to do all these things? You know, I'm just joking. And Jesus says, it is not for you to know the times and dates the Father has set by His own authority. And that simple sentence there, it, it, Jesus is not trying to be disrespectful. He's not trying to, trying to push them off. He's saying there's things that you will not know, cannot know, because it's too much for you to handle. You can't handle the truth right now. God tells us things as we need to know them. Irritates me. Does it irritate you? And you think, well, God, I really need to know. Well, apparently we don't. God tells us things as we need to know for our own good and for the good of the kingdom. And so we need to be respectful of the Lord that when we ask the Lord, God, will you do and reveal to me what's going on? And he tells you maybe just a little sliver of what's going on. And God, you say, well, that's not enough. It has to be enough. Then what do I do in the meantime? You wait. You do the last thing that God has asked you to do. If he asks you to serve in a different area, this certain area, did he tell you to stop serving in that area? Then you just keep going. Then you need, just, we need to be very sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is telling us. And when the Holy Spirit is telling you, you don't need to know, then you don't need to know. And just have faith that God will tell you what you need to know when you need to know it. And just like Joseph, we need to choose the way of faith for the sake of God's kingdom, because that's what's at stake. And what's really, what's really beautiful about the story is that Joseph doesn't seek his own glory, but God's glory. I mean, I mean there, there's no, you know, there's, he didn't write a book. He didn't go on Oprah. He didn't do any tours. He didn't invent anything. He didn't ask for money or fame or benefit. We don't see Joseph asking for anything. We never ask, see Joseph saying, what's in it for me, God? Because I'm giving up my entire life. I just, I had plans. I had dreams. I, I was going to get married and we we're going to you know, you know going to live and, and have children, and, and, and now I'm having to move from here to there and there to here. You need, never see Joseph even question. You know, an angel wakes him up and says, you need to go to Egypt right now, but I've got a business, and I've got a home, and I've got, I've got, you know, a perfect situation. Gone. Why? Because it was best for Joseph? No. You know that had to have been hard. He, 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 he was trying to settle his family, and God said, you need to leave right now. The child's life is in danger. Move now. Egypt, go. He goes. He gets settled in Egypt, starts his life over in Egypt, starts learning Egyptian and, and learning all the Egyptian ways and walking like an Egyptian and do all these things, and then you need to go back up. You know? And yet he was willing. You don't see him grumbling. You don't see him groveling. He could have said, well, God, make up your mind. First you tell me to go to Egypt. Now you tell me to go back. And God, what are you doing? God knew exactly what he was doing. And he chose Joseph because he knew in his heart was the heart of a humble spirit, a humble servant that would say, God, send me where I need to go. Tell me to walk. Tell me to run. Tell me to stop. Tell me to stay. Whatever you need me to do, I'll do. I won't grumble. I won't complain. Just tell me what you need me to do. And he'd never see him searching and, and seeking out his, his own benefit. It, it reminds me of a passage of Scripture here in the book of Philippians where Paul is commending his his young 
son in the Lord, Timothy. And as he's writing, as he's writing to the, to the church at Philippi in, in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 19, he says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. He says, I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare, for everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself, because as a, as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. And so, Timothy is just like Joseph. He is, he is exemplifying the kind of man, the kind of woman, the kind of person who God can use. God, you know, God can do anything. God can do anything He wants. It's great if we have talents and abilities and resources and opportunities, and that's all wonderful and fine. See, God created all those things in the first place. If you don't have them, He can give them to you. If you have them, you don't use them. He can't really do that, anything with it. But if you, if you have a humble heart, God can use that. Timothy exemplified that attitude, and so did Joseph. And see, Joseph did whatever was necessary to do his part for God's plans. Oftentimes we wonder, well, what does it really take to grow a church? Whatever is necessary. Whatever is necessary. What does it mean we need to build this or hire that or do this or start that? No. Whatever is necessary. And when we have this humble attitude that says, God, whatever is necessary to do your kingdom's work here, right here, right now, whether it be in my home or with my coworkers or in my community or here at my church or in my small group or in my Sunday school class or with my ministry, whatever it takes, you need me to do something, tell me to do it and I'll do it. If I don't have what it takes to do that, I'm just assuming, God, that you're going to provide the resources for me to do that. If you've called me to do something, you'll give me the resources. If you've called me to do something, you'll give me the confidence. If you've called me to do something, you'll go before me and, and lay down the groundwork for me to do that whatever is necessary. And Joseph saw that. Joseph saw that very clearly, that if he was going to serve and love the Lord, if he was going to take part in God's grand plan at this time, then when God said, you need to pick up and move to Egypt, he's going to go. No ifs, ands, or buts. He's going to drop and go. If he just got settled in Egypt and you needed to come back up to Israel, drop, go. Why? Was it good for him? No. Was it good for God's kingdom? Yes. And when we have that kind of attitude that says, God, wherever you want to lead me, I'll go. I'll follow. The beautiful thing is, is that there in that life, in that heart attitude, therein lies the, the real enjoyment in life. Friends, we are surrounded with people that have way more stuff than we do. They've got boats and RVs and vacation houses. And I'm not saying those things are bad. Those things are great. Enjoy them if you have them. But I think all of us are realizing those things really bring temporary happiness a, a temporary thrill, but they don't bring joy. And Joseph shows us he would rather be in the very center of God's will and have barely anything at all than to have everything and still be searching for that thing that'll give you some happiness. When we don't seek our own happiness, but we seek the Lord's and we seek others, we end up getting all the happiness and joy that we need. How beautiful of a thing is it to do like a, many of you did yesterday at the, at the Way Holiday Dinner? Isn't it a beautiful thing to serve? I, not not to, for you to, to brag about yourselves at all, but I, I want to brag on you. How many of you served yesterday? How many of you were there and helped and served? It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Matter of fact, Mark Swain told me this morning that there was 850 people that were served and were involved in that, and, and, and that's, that's praise to God because God brings the people. God brings the resources. They told me stories that they, they didn't have enough toys, they didn't have enough supplies, and at the last moments, God brought what they needed. God called them to do something, they did it, and God met them at their point of need. And isn't it a beautiful thing to serve? And many of you that serve, you could have just spent the day doing all kinds of things, but you, you, you chose to serve that day, and you gained joy in return. Friends, Joseph's journey has left us a legacy to follow. Use each day to move God's kingdom forward. You want a purpose in life? Let me give you a purpose in life. Move God's kingdom forward. Why? I don't have a position as a pastor, and I, I don't know the Bible very well. Move God's kingdom forward. Well, I, I can't get out very much. I, don't, I, I, don't, I can't drive very far. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, move God's kingdom forward. Well, does, that, does that mean I need to start a new church? No. It means you need to be Jesus to those around you. 
It means you need to spread the gospel by being the gospel to others. It means you need to encourage one another. You need to build the church. Does that mean you need to start building things? No. Certainly, and and the Buildings and Grounds Committee will tell you there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the physical premises of the church, but building the church does not build the church unless the church is already building it. Does that make sense? The church is needing to be built within the four walls. This building is a vessel. It's a tool that God uses to bless others. But this building could be used for many, many things. But God has chosen to use this building, these grounds, our resources as a church to glorify Him. Build the church by being the church. One of the things that we'll be sharing, and I'll just give you a little preview. One of the things we'll be sharing in January is this. We spend so much time trying to figure out what to do for church. We need to be church. Does that make sense? Be church. Be church. Read the book of, book of Acts and celebrate. Celebrate what God is doing. Celebrate what God is doing in your family and in this church and your community. Celebrate what Jesus did by coming and dying and living and giving you life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for what you've done, what you're doing in our lives. God, we didn't deserve your grace. We didn't deserve your mercy. And yet you give it to us freely. We love you. We want to live each and every day to build your kingdom, to move your kingdom forward in our family, in our homes, in our, in our, with our coworkers, at our business, or in our schools, in our small groups, in our Sunday school classes, in our ministries, in our neighborhoods. No matter where we are, we want to move your kingdom forward one inch a day. Give us the grace, give us the energy, and we'll give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.